What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day four. Four, can we get in there? Of 3D printing. What we've done so far is we've got our Ender 3 assembled. We have our first upgrade officially done. That upgrade came with an upgrade to the tubing. I really like that tubing because it can sustain higher temperature prints. We are gonna try to get away with at one point doing a uh, ABS print, but right now we're gonna stick with PLA. And then also, what is a, as a big upgrade, is the springs that attach to the bed. Now, once your springs are installed, you'll notice that they have a thinner profile. They have a flat profile compared to our earlier springs, which had a circular profile. So when those springs start to compress, the flat profile actually does a nice, smoother action when you're trying to compress or extend those springs. So instead of trying to fight the circular ones, which can kind of get out of axis and cause problems, these springs just tend to work a little bit better. Now, what we've done so far is we have each of these springs kind of half compressed. So that way, when we start to do our bed leveling, we have a lot of action to play with in either extending or compressing those springs when we level the bed. But we need to do our first calibration, and that is getting this Z limit switch to be calibrated to the bed. This is the, the way I recommend doing this because Instead of trying to get the bed to calibrate to your limit switch, you might have to fully compress or extend those springs. And the problem is, is that if you are outside the bounds of what the spring can do, then I don't care how often you're gonna to try to level your bed, it just simply won't work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn our system on. You're gonna hear the fan kick on here in a second. And what we're gonna do is we're going to auto home. And so what auto home is going to do it's going to kick in and test where your X, Y, and Z axes are. So it's gonna to touch the limit switch on the left side for the X, the one in the back for the Y, and then this Z direction right here. So we're gonna go over to prepare on our menu and click auto home. It's gonna to test to see where the X and Y axes are, and then it's gonna go all the way down to Z. This might take a little while, especially if your gantry arm is way up at the top, but that's okay. You just want to let it do its thing. Once it's made its contact and it's at what we'll call zero, we want to see if our if our plates need to be moved a whole lot or are we ready to calibrate. So I'm going to look down right here and I notice that there is a decent amount of gap between the nozzle and this corner right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just click disable stepper motor and then push this all the way over. Might have to move this just a little bit more and test to see And my nozzle is touching right here already. So that tells me that these two springs are already not in alignment. So I'm gonna look at one of them and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna raise this edge until it gets closer to this nozzle. I don't like how far that spring is already extending, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this to the left. Left is lower, right is raise. I've kind of, if you're looking down at the bed and you turn these knobs to the left, it lowers the bed, turn them to the right, it raises the bed. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is just turn all of these springs to where the gap between the nozzle and this print bed are all about the same. Now it's not going to be much, it's just a few millimeters. And what this will do for me is it'll create kind of a uniform gap between the bed and the nozzle. From there, I'm going to calibrate our Z limit switch. Okay. That looks good. The, it's not much of a gap. I'm gonna take just a couple millimeters or maybe even a, an eighth of an inch in that gap. But I want there to be a consistency all the way around. So, since there is a consistent gap all the way around, there we go. I'm going to bring this limit switch up the distance of that gap I had kind of all the way around. It's about eighth of an inch. So we're gonna undo 
these two screws and I'm going to bring up this limit switch about an eighth of an inch. Not much at all. Actually, I'm just misspeaking. We're not bringing that up an eighth of an inch, we're bringing it down an eighth of an inch because we want our gantry arm to come lower. So let's see if I did that correctly. It's going to hit auto home again. We're going to see x axis totally fine, y axis should be totally good. We just want our nozzle to get as close as we can with this bed once the, x, the z axis kicks in. If not, we're going to just adjust our limit switch again and then try our auto home once more. That was just a hair bit too high, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this again and I'm going to bring it down just a small amount, just that eighth of an inch. There we go. Hit auto home again. And there we go. That nozzle is now barely touching the bed. And from here we can start to do our first calibration. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a sticky note. And what we want is we want the connection points at all four corners. We want it to be to where when we drag and we get a sticky note in between the nozzle and the bed that there is slight resistance but we don't want to be there's so much resistance where if we pull on the sticky note it tears it. Okay so here's what we're going to do. We're going to disable our motors and I can't really get the sticky note in between so that means I need to lower the bed. So I'm going to turn this to the left, left is lower, turn this to a point to where I can get go. We want it to where there's just a little bit of resistance between the nozzle and the print bed. We don't do the point where there's so much resistance we tear the paper or cause deformations in it, just a slight resistance. So now we're going to come over to the left side and notice that I notice that the nozzle is starting to already drag across the bed. So that tells me I need to go ahead and lower this end as well. We're going to go ahead and lower this. has a lot, too much resistance there. That looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this on to the back. Go ahead and lower, I'm gonna look like I have to lower all four corners before we get finally calibrated over here. You want just enough resistance where it has a slight pull. And we're going to do the same thing for the other side. Oop, there's not any resistance here, so we're going to turn this to the right. And there we go. We've got just a little bit of resistance between the uh, for the paper between the bed and the nozzle for all four corners. Now this isn't perfect, but it definitely gets us in the ballpark of getting started. So we're going to call that done here for this video. We've got our Z limit calibrated. We've got our first bed leveling done. What we're going to do next is we're going to load our filament and then get our first test print up and running. 
If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. Please, the videos have been helpful. Please like and subscribe. And just throw me a comment there saying that this video has been helpful for you as far as getting started in your own 3D printing adventure. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. And I'll see you later. Take care.